This is a hyperextended super slit, and this is an arrow smuggle flight. These are two pretty well known Zelda glitches, but they have one more thing in common. Despite them being pretty flashy looking glitches, they are not the most powerful glitches in their respective games. The Zelda franchise has a long history of game breaking and powerful glitches, but how have these glitches evolved in the past 26 years of the franchise? In this video, we're going to take a look at the most powerful glitches in every single 3D Zelda game. But first, let's set some ground rules. No repeat glitches, and no remakes, unless the remake has a significant enough glitch that it's worth mentioning. So don't forget to subscribe, and let's take a look at our first game, Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time is well known as one of the most broken games in the franchise. It's well equipped with multiple movement glitches, wrong warps, and item generation. However, one glitch stands above them all, stale reference manipulation. This glitch, originally discovered accidentally by multiple people over the years, was originally researched and developed by glitches and stuff. By picking up some unloaded object, typically grass, rocks, or even bomb chews, we're able to manipulate the spot in the game memory where the object was. This makes SRM a glitch that can literally do it all. Arbitrary wrong warps, item generation, giving Link the ability to fly, and even the more powerful arbitrary code execution. Through arbitrary code execution, the options become truly endless. And I really mean truly endless. During a glitch exhibition during Games Done Quick 2020, a task demonstrating the powers of arbitrary code execution put Franker Z on the B button. So if that doesn't say broken, I don't know what does. This glitch was so broken that it completely split the Ocarina of Time speedrunning leaderboards, separating runs that use stale reference manipulation from ones that do not. So Ocarina of Time is a pretty broken game, but what about its sister game, Majora's Mask? Majora's Mask was released just two years after the release of Ocarina of Time. However, the majority of the glitches present in Ocarina of Time were not patched. This was an era before Nintendo sat in speedrunning discords in order to release glitch patches after all. Stale reference manipulation is still present in Majora's Mask. However, like I said before, I want to avoid repeating any glitches. So let's talk about the other glitch that the Majora's Mask speedrunning community classifies as a major glitch. Text Overflow. Developed by Exodus122, Fash, and other members of the Majora's Mask speedrunning community. By activating an out of bounds owl in Clocktown, dubbed as the Hidden Owl, we can glitch our Song of Soaring Warp menu. This menu shares data with the pause menu map, and selecting a location allows us to warp to different owls across the map. Text Overflow relies on highlighting the arrow icon on the map. By doing this over and over again, we can overflow the index warp text. In extension, this allows us to open the debug menu, leftover development content in the game that allows you to give yourself every single item. This is not all text overflow is capable of though. Earlier research into the glitch theorized that arbitrary code execution could potentially be possible. However, development on this glitch was halted due to it being blanket banned off of the leaderboards. This was due to numerous reasons. It only worked on the worst release, the Wii U, the setup required playing the Song of Soaring many, many times, and the debug menu itself was dubiously legal in a speedrun. Lunatic J is a great video on this topic that I helped out with, so I'd recommend giving it a watch after this video. So the Nintendo 64 Zelda games have some very obvious massive glitches, but as we step further into the future, it becomes a bit harder to categorize. The Wind Waker is the first of the games where I had a bit of trouble landing on a pick for this video. The Wind Waker is one of the first 3D Zelda games to be ran on a completely different engine. And a different engine means different glitches. The Wind Waker had a number of new discoveries made over the past few years. Originally, I was going to go with Actor Unloading, a glitch in Wind Waker that involves overloading the game's actor list, causing various actors, such as the Barrier and Hyrule, to unload. However, I want to focus on one of Wind Waker's newest advancements, Bomb Push Clipping. Bomb Push Clipping has been known about for a very long time. However, it just recently has become something that is better understood and more widely used. By positioning Link in a precise position near a semen collision, we can drop a bomb to displace Link through the wall. This trick can be incredibly precise, and can require different bomb sizes, positions, and drop timings. For a long time this trick was not developed, as finding setups for the clips is very difficult. However, with the creation of scripts by Trog, finding these setups recently became a lot more feasible. Also, I'd like to bring attention to Wind Waker's remake, Wind Waker HD. This remake has a unique glitch that a lot of you have probably heard of before, item sliding. By moving forward with a first person item and holding very slightly in the opposite direction, Link begins sliding at exponential speeds. This can be used to clip through walls, super swim, and jump between islands. 
This is the only remake I'll be talking about in this video, as the rest of them for the most part do not have any substantially unique massive glitches. The next game, Twilight Princess, is notorious for having the longest any percent speedrun out of any of the other 3D Zelda games. This is because compared to the other games in the franchise, this is the only one without some incredibly large sequence break. However, Twilight Princess is not without its glitches, and the one we're talking about here, Early City in the Sky, which was discovered by Sexy Zora 19 and Paroxade, is the biggest sequence break that currently exists in Twilight Princess. In Renato's basement in Kakariko Village, there is the cannon that you use to get to the city in the sky. This room can be clipped into by transforming into the corner of the statue blocking the path, allowing you to skip the majority of the game's dungeons. Twilight Princess is a relatively unbroken game compared to the rest of the games, but hopefully its time comes where its any percent speedrun is comparable to the rest of the games in the series. If you're familiar with Twilight Princess speedruns, you might be a bit surprised that I didn't mention a different glitch, back in time. This is because the next game in the series, Skyward Sword, is more deserving of that title. Skyward Sword marks the end of the traditional 3D Zelda series of games. And in traditional 3D Zelda fashion, it is not without its overpowered glitch, Back in Time, which was discovered by the only one. By resetting the console when the game attempts to reload a scene, such as for instance voiding out or dying, the game will go back to the title screen, while also giving you full control of Link. Due to how the title screen functions in Skyward Sword, this control gives us the ability to manipulate the game's three save files, as well as the title screen map. Back in Time is incredibly powerful in this game, allowing us to set flags on our files and set Link's position. The ability to set flags within the game allows us to skip the vast majority of the game's dungeons, bringing the any percent speedrun down to just over an hour. This is done through a variety of different Back in Time related glitches, such as bit magic, reverse bit magic, and bit saves. Discussing how all of these different applications work could be a video on its own, so if you'd like to learn more I'd highly recommend checking out Gymnast86's videos on the different subjects. In the same vein of incredibly complicated glitches, it's about time we talk about Breath of the Wild and Inventory Slot Transfer, a glitch discovered by ZX Robin. This glitch in Breath of the Wild is just as powerful as it is complicated, so let's try to keep this simple. By selling an item slot and dropping the same item at the same time, you can trick the game into thinking that you have a different number of inventory items than you actually have. Due to the way that the game stores your inventory, you can use this to manipulate different values within your inventory. By doing this, you can duplicate items, become invincible, and give yourself items you would not have otherwise had. This is a vital glitch multiple Breath of the Wild speedruns use for this reason. IST and inventory corruption is something that is being explored in Breath of the Wild glitch hunting, so I would not be surprised if this leads to something much larger in the future. But does it work in Breath of the Wild sequel and the latest release in the 3D Zelda franchise, Tears of the Kingdom? Well, no. Nintendo patched the vast majority of the glitches that were present in Breath of the Wild. However, that did not stop Tears of the Kingdom from spawning a whole new list of glitches. The one we're talking about in this case is Zuggling, discovered by ZV Leon. There are multiple ways to achieve Zuggle in Tears of the Kingdom, but the most common way is through map Zuggling. By doing some precise menuing with our back against a wall, we are able to hold multiple instances of a weapon at once. On its own, this glitch allows Tears of the Kingdom speedrunners to deal massive damage to enemies, even used in the any percent speedrun to beat each phase of Ganondorf in just a single flurry rush. However, where this glitch becomes even more interesting is when we stack enough of these weapons to overload the game, known as Zuggle Overload. Zuggle Overloading has some very strange properties, the most obvious of which is that Link becomes a floating torso. However, this state has some pretty useful properties. It can allow you to clip through walls, have an infinite durability master sword, and even gain another useful state, known as Arrow Smuggle. Arrow Smuggle is a glitch that now has a much easier way to be activated. However, Zuggle Overloading used to be one of the main ways to perform this glitch without amiibos in the any percent speedrun. By smuggling a bow through Zuggle Overload, we can put Link into a weird state where he's able to cancel jump slashes by attempting to draw the smuggled bow. This is the primary method of movement in the Tears of the Kingdom any percent speedrun. So that's the most broken glitch in every 3D Zelda game. If you'd like to see these glitches in action, I've left a link to every single 3D Zelda any percent world record or run that utilizes the glitches I've talked about. If you're interested in videos that break down some of these Zelda glitches or Zelda speedruns in general, click on the video on screen now. And of course, subscribe.